What's up YouTube? What's cool? What's groovy? What's happening? Welcome to It's Time for Life. Now, gonna review and recap the season finale of Love After Lockup, episode 14. Now what's this called? Prison Blues and Wedding Bells, okay? We see a lot of things happening. We see Megan and Sarah meeting up, okay? We see weddings popping off, we see babies popping out. There's a lot going on. Now, if you are not already part of this family, make sure you hit bump, stomp, and zone on that subscribe button. And what else? You already know it. Make sure you hit that notification bell at the bottom right there so that you get notified about any future uploads. Now let's get right into this review. So at the end of this video, I'll give a full recap of what happened. Now I watched this a few days ago, so I've forgotten a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to look at my notes. So hope you don't mind. But here we go. So we start off with Brittany and Marcelino. And um, Brittany is super, super pregnant. And she's driving a car. She's going to meet Amanda. Amanda is smiling from ear to ear. She tells her, you know, she's like, oh, you're pregnant, okay, yeah. Are you guys getting married then? And she's like, yeah, we're getting married. And she's like, oh, congratulations. You know that kind of smile where you're trying to be super excited and encouraging and nice. But at the same time, you could tell that she's like really, <laughs> you know, she didn't think that things were going to go this way. So she's not, she's happy, but she's not too happy kind of thing. That's what it looks like anyway. So then it cuts to Bunky and Brittany's sisters and they're in the car, they're, they don't have any seatbelts on for some reason or another, but they're on their way to the wedding. And then it cuts to Marcelino and his friends and they're all getting ready for the wedding and stuff like that. And the friend is like, one of Marcelino's friends is like, you never see him smile, so it's really good to see him smile. And Marcelino is ecstatic, he's so happy to be getting married. Um, Brittany and her dad have some kind of father-daughter talk, you know, just right before the wedding. He's going to walk her down the aisle. He's just like, I love you. You make me so proud. And then he's like tearing up and stuff like that. Just as I'm about to cry myself, they cut to Megan, Sarah, and Michael. But anyway, get to that in a minute. So we cut to the violinist and she's absolutely gorgeous. And she's there playing all kinds of, so she plays like two variations of the traditional kind of wedding songs and you can tell that this this wedding is really well planned they have the music going they have the red and white kind of theme going and it's really really nice and giovanni is so so cute as he always is and he tells the producers that he can't wait to meet his sister and the producers kind of go like uh which sister they're all confused and even i was like who are you talking about and it's like the one in my mom's tummy duh <laughs> I don't even know if he really says duh, but he has some kind of duh look on his face and he's just he's so cute I keep looking at that little boy and I'm like Marcelino is so lucky to have this little boy as his kind of stepson because Girlfriend any other misbehaving where my real daddy had kind of hollering and screaming hooting and hollering kind of kid Would not have worked for Marcelino. Okay, he would have shut it down and it wouldn't have been cool and friendly but this this seems to work out because Giovanni is just too cute Um. anyway the wedding shots are beautiful I always wonder about these TV shows where people get like professional video videography you know shot from different angles and stuff like that it was really cool and I wonder if they get you know like some kind of copy of that I'm sure they do somehow it cuts to um, Brittany and Marcelino standing in front of the jail um, Brittany is putting her middle finger up, they're kind of laughing and there's a prison guard or whatever you call those people standing there and he's like, mm, you might not want to do that, I'm assuming you're an ex-convict, you might not want to do that. I don't know why she did that anyway, but I also don't know why they, they just sneak that into this whole thing. I thought we were moving on from all the just stuff and you know, it's getting married and everything is cool. Then the wedding is there, you see Amanda sitting there, Amanda's at the wedding y'all. And next to Amanda, behold, what do we see? She got a boyfriend. And they say they're very wows and they're so heartfelt and so amazing and yeah then they ask that silly question that I never know why people ask this like, if anybody has any objections to this marriage please speak now or forever hold your peace why do they put this in do they put it in TV programs especially because it brings like a sort of special effect and some kind of a suspense like I don't know in this case especially why you would put that in there knowing that maybe there's a bunch of people that are gonna be against this from happening but anyway it happened nonetheless and they had a beautiful wedding beautiful reception where Giovanni was stuffing his face with some red cake to match his red beautiful hair and that was basically the end of their segment moving on to Lizzie and Scott now this is post their alter altercation and Scott is on the bed with his p head in the pillow 
he looks like he is gone 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 like he is lying there flat he's not moving with his face into the pillow and talking into the pillow and lizzie gets in and she's like just like how i was i was like get up dude what is he doing he's talking about that all the money is gone and lizzie's like it's only money scar and I don't know how she thinks that she could say that it's only money Scott when you know he's the one who's been working really really hard for that money and obviously as a grown man will have other things to do with his money I spend it all on you and buy you lavish lavish things and stuff like that the whole time I'm looking at them I'm just like look man up man up and if this were a woman I would have said woman up just get up and talk to this woman and tell what it is because he cannot keep living this lie he's broke she doesn't know she's trying to milk him dry and she he just doesn't have the money so in the confessionals, or like with her in person, he's able to say, I'm so broke, really broke. Lizzie doesn't know that I'm broke. But in terms of saying it to Lizzie, he can't do that. Now, for me, I'm like this. If money is going to change, or you know that money is going to change the course of the relationship, it's not worth it in the same breath I can say if you know that you're broke or your financial situation is interesting and you think you cannot talk to it talk to your spouse about this it's not gonna work either and it's it's not good to stay in that kind of relationship now I believe honesty is what the best policy okay if you don't have any money to help me out I don't need you they start playing this very scary kind of music that they would play in like Nollywood movies or Gollywood movies <sighs> because it is really really scary when she says that um, basically she looks like a gold digger she be spending his money lavishly on like boutiques two thousand dollar in a boutique you know fancy dinners like for me I'm like this been in prison for 10 years I'm sure what's it called Wendy's McDonald's KFC all the affordable places I've also you know even uh, what do you call it I don't know Vapianos or something like that all these places would have changed in the 10 years so if you wanted to experience some kind of different type of meal anything outside of the prison walls to me I would think would be fine dining anyway but this woman really went for like the hundreds of dollars for one meal kind of place I don't know why I don't know why Anyway, so he's starting to think, talk about like his bills and stuff like that, and how he's not making it, and how he's broke, and how he's he's really like in distress. And she was like, "You should have thought about the money." Basically, before he started spending it on her, which is true, but shouldn't be coming out of her mouth. Like that is cold. So then she goes close to him and she grabs his face and she's like, "If you don't have any money, I don't need you." Ah! She's done. She walks out. It cuts to Jasmine, who's sitting on the bed, kind of like this. Kind of like, kind of like, um, how to say, like some kind of a boss of some kind of criminal op operation with her, is it done, kind of look. And then it cuts back to Scott. And he says, if, I don't know how it cuts back to this anyway, but he's like, if I'm making life hard for you, I'll go. And then Lizzie's like, listen, Let's just do a long distance friendship. Not a long distance relationship, okay, that's fine. Not just a friendship, okay, but a long distance friendship. Then she throws this in, right? And one thing we need to know about Lizzie is that she's a born again virgin, born again uh, Christian uh, type situation. And so she did not want to be intimate with Scott, right? This is what she said. So um, she didn't want to be intimate till marriage. Ain't nothing wrong with that at all. But then she twists it and says, we've never been intimate. How is that not a friendship? Basically saying that, okay, so that is why, it almost looks like that's why she, she never gave him a little bit more affection because then at any given point, she could just go. Scott looks very, very devastated. And he's like, what if I find somebody else? How would you feel? And she's like, get the heck out. Get the heck out. So. He goes and we hear something bloop in the toilet and it's like what is that and she thinks it's a ring and she's like did you just throw the ring in the toilet no listen what have people been throwing ever since this show began what is it you got five seconds to guess you guessed it a phone 
he throws his phone in the toilet. I don't know if this produces by them phones or what happens, but these people love to throw their phones like every single person has done this. Jasmine is so happy that this is the situation that this has happened and she, she's talking in the confessional like, yeah, he had to go. <laughs> All of a sudden, Lizzie's in the warehouse with no jewelry, no makeup, no nails, and she's talking in her confessional about how she's promoted at her new job and how her new boss took a chance on her being an ex comet and all that and that Jasmine thought Scott was a piece of crap anyway, so... Here she is. And I just wonder what happened to all the possessions, all the things that Scott gave her. The clothes from the boutique, um, you know, because she's talking about she's just living kind of paycheck to paycheck kind of thing. But, you know, she's making it work. And I'm like, all these possessions, like her car, all this stuff, like, did he take it back? What, what happened with that? I don't know. I guess she just kind of kept it. And then we see Scott in the garden. And he's like, Jasmine, can you get me this? And I'm like, I already know this is not going to be Lizzie's Jasmine. These people have found some other Jasmine to, to, to tag along and to, to be with him or whatever. Comes this beautiful, fine black woman, comes up and turns out that's his new girlfriend. Very beautiful looking girl, woman I should say. And, you know, they just said they're enjoying each other's company. You know, the producers are asking them what they have, you know had sex yet and stuff like that i don't know what what's wrong with these producers why do they need to know everything you know just follow the story anyway so no they said they're, they're just enjoying each other's company jasmine's like they're going to be together till death do them part and then it looks like yeah it looks like it'll work out because this is without the money the man is dry dried up shriveled up no dough and this woman is with him and it seems to be working out so that's the end of that segment moving on to matt and caitlin so Caitlin and Matt's mom are talking about the hearing because Matt is back in jail. Caitlin and Matt video chat. So he's in the jail and she's in his house and you know, he's like 100% sure he's, he's going to get out of the jail on bail and stuff like that. So he's like, yeah, I'm definitely going to get out. By the way, are you going to pay my, my bail? And he's like, huh? How are you going to, how do you know you're going to get out? You've got all these priors. Like, how do you know for certain that you're going to get out of jail? And he's like, I'm 100% sure. And she's like, you the judge? you the judge she's had it just like matt's mom who by the way looks extremely exhausted and tired and just done fed up with all this nonsense so anyway they go to the hearing matt is not even there he's been shown on this big plasma tv screen and yeah he's just there with his attorney or whatever and they're in in the courthouse so they set the bill to 25 a thousand dollars but then after a bit of you know law talk here and there judge attorney talk it gets down to 7500 of which the person who's going to bail him out would have to pay only 10 percent with 750 to let him out on bail so caitlin is like hmm thinking about what to do even matt's mom is like listen i never paid bail for this guy so it's up to you she's been through this roller coaster before she knows the dealio she knows that it's a vicious cycle but what happens caitlin pays the bill turns out matt is six days out and stayed with his friend sam doesn't even come by the crib, nothing, for six days. Then all of a sudden, strolls by the crib. I mean, that's his mom's house. Walks in, casually, as if nothing has happened. As if he hasn't just been MIA for like six days. Walks in, Caitlin is at the crib doing her own washing. Thank you, Jesus, that Matt's mom does not have to do this washing. Because, <laughs> embarrassment. Anyway, so she's doing her own laundry and everything. He walks in, he's like, hey, how are you doing? She's like, hey, how are you doing? That's about the interaction. Basically, they start arguing, da -da 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 -da, back and forth, back and forth. One of the first things Matt says is like, when was the last time we were intimate? As if that's really important in this moment. But anyway, they have a big fight and Caitlyn kind of leaves. You know when I see these type of things, I don't really gloat like, ha ha ha, look at these people and their life is all messed up and their minds are all messed up and they do messed up stuff. No. I'm thinking that certain circumstances have definitely made people to behave the, the way they are behaving. And it's hard to reprogram and rewire folk, especially if they are amongst people that are also wired in a certain way. And what does it take if your own mama or your girlfriend or your loved one, your fiance cannot get through to you? They're crying on the phone, they're talking, they're screaming, they're shouting, and they cannot get through to you. I mean it must be hard and we don't know what that's like so a lot of people on social media will be gloating about these type of things and sure this show is really entertaining but i think we have to learn something from it and take certain things away from it as well that's the end of that segment moving on to tracy and clint 
So Clint is just talking, oh my wife this that that, my goddess, blah blah blah, my goddess Tracy, my wife, blah blah blah, my wife Tracy, my goddess. And when he talks about wife, I even forget that they're married. People in this thing just get married for no particular reason. These people got married one day after she was let out of prison. And it cuts to the county jail, or outside of the county jail, and some very extremely skinny and beach blonde woman walks into a, uh, what do you call it? into a bus and turns out it's Tracy and she says she's not on drugs but why she's so skinny is because she could not eat the prison food so there's that and oh I, I feel kind of bad for her because she really does look extremely skinny so she's changing on the bus and weirdly enough people behind her even are t turning to see her change I don't know how these people knew that she was changing or what some of these some of these shoots are really sh shady and fake like how did the people in front of her with their with the backs of their heads turn to her know that she was changing enough so that they they could move their heads and see what she was doing mm, can't fool me anyway so it's funny because we all thought this storyline was completely dead especially because for a long time they were only showing Clint 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 and, and nobody knew where Tracy was um but I'm guessing that the, the TV crew didn't know where them where Tracy was only when she phoned him and was like yep I've been arrested again that they could now follow the, the tracks and see where she was at I remember that couple at the beginning it was an older lady and then a guy and um, they they cut that storyline because she was waiting for him outside the jail and he never showed up so that was it she stood there for hours and hours he never showed up so that was the end of that anyway Back to Clint and Tracy. So she's dropped in the middle of nowhere. I mean, nowhere. I don't know how they know where to drop these people off. Um, what do they say? You know, just go 200 miles east from that junction and there you'll find her. Like, I don't even know how Clint find, found her. There was no buses around there. There was no Ubers to, to be taken. Nothing. This woman was left in the wilderness. But somehow, Clint finds his goddess, lifts her up and twirls her in the air because she's so light now all this while i'm just looking at her hair i'm like who, who, who did this to your hair because you remember when she came out of the jail he spent hundreds of dollars just on a haircut and coloring hundreds of dollars and now she went back in and in a short time did a messed up her hair he gets down on his knees proposes again with the ring that he left behind you remember he was so proud about that but to most people that indicated um my friend this woman wants to leave you because she's just left the ring behind she didn't take the ring but anyway he takes that same ring proposes again and yeah it's like uh he knows they're gonna last forever again where is the rental car that tracy took and clint still has to pay twenty one thousand dollars for where is that all that's just shoved under the rug and all we see is them being happy and ah I don't I don't know but anyway that's the end of that segment then we move on to Megan Sarah and Michael <laughs> we finally get the meetup we've all been waiting for now Sarah stand, sits across from Megan she's just talking about how she's the wife the wife the wife the wife and the mother of his kids and all these type of things right giving kind of an attitude and Megan is like listen here I am not taking the attitude she's talking about. She's her too. She didn't know that he was married. And you got played. I got played. We all got played. And on top of that, Megan explains that she done gave him her V card. And you can tell that Sarah is a little bit troubled by that. But you know, this whole while, Sarah cannot look Megan in the eye at all. She is so angry with Megan. And what I think it's so interesting is that people are never angry at the man. Michael knew about both of them. He knew he was married to this woman and had a kid with her. At the same time, he knew he then went and sought another relationship with another woman. Was completely innocent and did not know about what was going on. So I think that's a bit, it's always a bit interesting. And of course in this situation, it is easier to gear the anger towards Megan because she's actually there in the flesh and Michael is back in jail. So it's easier to do that, but it's really, really sad. Anyway. So Sarah asked her at some point, are you part of his family? You know, trying to get to know how deeply marinated she is into all of this. And she's like, yeah, I spoke to his mom, you know, because that one time she FaceTimed the mom. And at this point, she's actually even seen the mom in the flesh uh, when the mom is all like, she had to go. So anyway, Sarah is kind of disappointed because in all this, the mom has been silent. When Michael disappeared for a few days, she was silent, even though she knew about Megan. So. 
then in the confessionals megan is all like it's a good thing michael is not here because god knows i would and i'm like my friend please leave god out of all of this god ain't got nothing to do with this god is not part of any of this mess y'all created all of this leave him out of it okay you got enough things to deal with mm -hmm. she says that she could easily kill him and she wouldn't feel bad about it i'm like why would you say such a horrendous thing on national te television and you know if something happens to him everybody gonna look at her sarah's walking about and then michael calls from from prison first thing she says to him is you're gonna be done with her right i don't understand why she's asking this question because i thought that she was done with him and it didn't wasn't incumbent upon whether he was done with her but apparently she wants to hear from him that he is done with her he just responds sarah and she says you proved everybody right except for me you proved me wrong and i'm like girl you better bring those bars she's talking sense she's telling him what it is and what it isn't and then she's like you will never understand and he's like understand what hey i don't understand how these women communicate with this man because everything they say is just regurgitated back to them with a question mark at the end. He just fires a question with a question. You ask him something and pew, he comes up with another question. Pew, he comes up with another question. But um, questions need answers. So these women are constantly walking around with unanswered questions. All he needs to understand is that he cheated and messed up two innocent women's lives. That's 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 what that is. And he never addresses the situation at hand. In fact, you barely, or this is what they show us anyway, but you barely get to see what the man himself is thinking. It's just like, forget you for making me have to defend you to her three-year-old daughter. You came back into her life and did nothing but leave her. And I'm like, bars, this woman is coming back with the bars. Okay, and she says, you took life from me. I gotta go. And then she's gone, and she hangs up the phone. And yeah, this woman stood by him for what, like six years, something ridiculous like that. Then she's talking about how she wants to have a divorce and stuff like that. Hmm. We go to Megan. Megan has now gone back home. Tells the dad, listen, this is what happens when I was over there. Michael got arrested. He's like, kind of looking at her like, my friend, my child, my daughter. I done told you what was going to happen and that this was not a good thing to do. But then she goes on to say, oh yeah, and he's married. Oh, now he mad. He real mad. He starts telling her because she starts crying uncontrollably. So he's like, sorry, 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 sorry. Now, Megan needed to hear sorry because ain't nobody said sorry to her. Nobody apologized. Not even Michael. He just... He just did the question thing. He never apologized. Sarah didn't apologize, but I guess that's kind of okay. You can understand that. She's in her feelings. But someone needs to do that. And I love it when people do that. And maybe it's because of my culture. Because, like, in Ghana, when somebody, like, it's normal for us to, like, if somebody, like, stop, stumps their toe or something like that, right? You say, oh, sorry. Or if something bad happens to somebody, you say, oh, sorry. Or if they have like some bad news or whatever, you say, oh, sorry. It doesn't mean that you actually did something to cause the thing that's giving them hurt or grief or whatever. But you just say sorry because somebody's got to say sorry. Now you come to this part of the world and you say, oh, sorry. And people were like, but you didn't do anything. I know, but I'm sorry. Like, I'm sorry for you that you're going through that. Nonetheless. You get what I'm saying? Dad is like, he's not even a wolf, he's a snake. And you know what I do with snakes? I cut the head off. He's gonna get dealt with. I wanna hurt him. And I'm like, what's wrong with Megan and her dad? Saying all this stuff on national television. He's like, don't let him call you, and don't you call him. And then Megan's like, well, I need answers. And then the dad is like, you don't need any answers. <sighs> so then the producers are sitting with Megan in a confessional, and they're asking, so you've had a night to think about it. So what do you think, you know, is going to happen? And just as they say that, who calls? It's Michael. And the first thing she says is, are you married for real? And I don't know why she's asking that question, because she just had a whole conversation with the wife, who says that she was married. Why would she lie about that? Although maybe she could lie about it. But still, like, why is she asking this question? With both of these women, the questions that they ask him right off the bat were just weird. I would be like, what have you got to say for yourself? Now that I know the truth and the full truth, what have you got to say about yourself? Is there something you need to explain? Like, you, you spill the tea. Spill it. Go on. Talk. Say what you need to say. Spill your lies or whatever. I know the truth right now. Just go ahead. Go ahead. Bring it, bring it, bring it. Just go ahead. 
what do you need to say? I feel like conversations with this Michael are just like, are you married for real? What you mean about the cheating? May I cheat? You mean to tell me you're not with your wife? Hey, I ain't trying to talk about that right now. Okay, you ain't trying to answer my questions. To the loo, I'm out of here. You know, it's crazy. I don't know how these people talk to this man. Anyway, then it cuts to a video of him in prison. You know, he's standing behind a glass thing with, with the phone. So he's holding the phone and the producers or whatever are filming him standing there. And he's like, Megan, I'm always have love for you. In the same breath, he's like, Sarah. I wish things could go back to how it was when we first met. And I still love you. Eh? This man is a polygamist. Boom, I said it. He wants both of them. That's where it ends. That is the entire end of Love After Lockup. Now, I heard something about 10 extra bonus episodes, and I guess you could do these episodes forever and ever and ever and ever and day. You could keep following these people till their grandpas and grandmas, but I don't know if that's true or not. Now, let me do a recap of what actually happened after everything was said and done and kind of where people were at at the end of this shooting. So, Brittany and Marcelino have a sweet baby girl called, hmm, I don't know how you pronounce this, something like Zoila? 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 Anyway, cute little baby. They're going to move into a new house in Las Vegas. I don't know if they're taking Giovanni with them because I never saw Giovanni with his um, dad or anything um, at, at the wedding or anything like that. But his dad seems pretty cool. I don't know what, what's going to happen with that. But anyway, they show a cute little Christmas picture with the whole family, Giovanni, the new baby, and Marcelino and Brittany, and Santa. And it's super cute. And I think they're going to have an amazing relationship and god bless them so then it cuts to scott and lizzie scott is working really hard to pay off all that debt that was accrued by lizzie mostly and you know he's taking it slow with jasmine and lizzie um is not happy that he moved on so quickly which is interesting because she said get the heck out <laughs> but anyway so that's them and I hope it works out for all of them. It is really good that Lizzie got a job and you know she's gonna see what the real life world is actually about and feel you know feel self-sufficient and you know feel good about about herself and be able to accomplish things for herself and her daughter so that is pretty good and Scott is hopefully gonna be with this woman who loves him for him and not for what he can provide her and that is also a very nice thing. In terms of Caitlin and Matt very short, they never got back together, and Matt has a new girlfriend. That's it. Very sad. Clint and Tracy, um, Clint got fired by his ex-wife, who was his boss. Don't know why, but now he's working with his family at the meat market, and they're gonna renew their vows in front of family and friends, and they're apparently going strong, which is very good, and it's amazing, and yeah, hope the best for them as well. And the last couple, Megan and Michael and Sarah Now this one really upset me. So basically Sarah is still in contact with Michael But so is Megan Ha! Megan with her cut the head of a snake dad is apparently Not afraid enough To still have a relationship with this Michael some kind of relationship even if it's still phoning, you know, it was, I, I don't know, I, I don't know. But she's wrong for that because she knows now that he is married and lied to her all this while for two years. She must not like peace. She must not like peace. Sarah and Michael eventually have a kid called Rain. And that's basically where everything ends. So, yeah, Love of the Lockup was very, very interesting. I hope to make more episodes and I would review those for you guys and I hope you've been liking these reviews slash recaps um, it's been very interesting to watch make sure you subscribe follow me on my social medias and hit the notification bell like bam 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 if you want to know how I created these waves that didn't turn out too great if you want to know just stay tuned to my channel because I will be showing how I achieved these waves with the waveformers okay I will see you in the next one god bless make time for glorious life Mm -hmm. Bye.